my name is Philippa Hartley. I work at the SKA headquarters, which is based in the northwest of the UK. So I work as an observatory scientist at the SKA, engaging with the scientific community. My science expertise are in radio astronomy, looking at objects like quasars, which are these really powerful objects in space. I look at strong gravitational lenses. They act like cosmic telescopes, so you can see the background object. The SKA Observatory is building and going to operate the largest radio telescope in the world. It's currently just started its construction phase, so it's just about to start building the telescopes in Australia and South Africa, with the headquarters being in the UK. The SKA telescopes won't just be one telescope, it will consist of two telescopes, and each of those telescopes will be made of hundreds, if not thousands, of smaller telescopes. And it's through all those telescopes that you're going to be able to see really far back into space and see amazing things. The SKA is now an IGO, so it's an intergovernmental organisation, and it's made up of currently eight member countries plus more who are joining very soon, including Spain, which we're really excited about. We need that structure because it's such a big project. It's really important to have that collaboration across the world. And in fact, it's one of the most exciting things about being part of the project is that international collaboration. The SKA regional centres will be located around the world and they're huge computing data centres where scientists in the future will actually access SKA data. So scientists will come to the data, they will be able to access their data at the SKA regional centres and they will be able to perform analysis on those centres. So those centres are a really important part of the whole SKA um, model. I think the main challenges of the SKA project is the sheer volume of data that the telescopes will produce. That data will be processed along its journey from the telescopes, where you're having huge amounts of data coming through from the light that the telescopes receive. That data will be combined and then it will be sent to the regional centres where it's still really large volumes of data. And that again, that's why we need to investigate prototypes. We need to investigate models for how scientists will interact with the data in the future. Open science is actually a really important part of the scientific method and it's how science is done. It involves other teams being able to reproduce the results of a first team and it involves things like being able to share scientific methods with each other. The SKA is committed to open science principles and it's committed to that for several reasons. So one of the reasons is because there's so much data, so many volumes of data, we want scientists to be able to share their analysis methods with each other so that you can do more efficient science. Um, we also want the data to be accessible by scientists. So there will be a proprietary period where scientists um, who have written a proposal will receive the data and analyse it. But after that, the data will be open to everyone. The SKA was originally designed to be able to see so far into space that we could visualise the formation of the first galaxies. And that's why so many telescopes are needed to be able to see that. But when you build something so amazing with so many telescopes, you can do so much science. You can do the original reason it was designed, but you can do amazing other things like you can study the evolution of galaxies over time. You can test theories of general relativity, so you can see if Einstein was right or wrong. You can study the magnetism in space. So in space, you've got these magnetic fields that you can only see through radio telescopes. And you can study things that we're only just discovering, like fast radio bursts. And the most exciting thing, perhaps, is the unknown. So we don't know what we're going to see. And that's probably the most exciting thing for me.